Philadelphia, PA. Today, we've got a matchup here in Pivotal Week 7 between the Carolina Panthers and the Philadelphia Eagles. Fairly short kick, taking it to 14 here. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. Here we go. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Now a play fake here on first down. And his first pass here is going to fall incomplete. What's the old adage? Be quick, but don't hurry. Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. <laughs> that ball had to be gotten rid of. Otherwise, he was going to get sacked. First carry of the game for Christian McCaffrey. And forget about finding a lane. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. So a we'll look here at the key inactives, and we got this list before the game down on the field. And they tell us the same thing every time, don't they? Next man up. No excuses. Be ready to play. That's the mantra of every organization. The key is having guys on the roster who are capable of filling in and playing at a high level. That's when you know you've drafted well, scouted free agents well, and stocked your team just the way you're supposed to. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. You can tell they were hoping for a flag there offensively. Several on the sideline motioning. Hey, why not a penalty? Why not a penalty? I, what did you see? Yeah, I think you've got to let them play. And the officials are instructed. If there's contact coming from both sides, no flag. Let them fight it out. And forces fourth down. Winston, the Eagles now with a first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Now it's the all-purpose back. This is Darren Sproles. And he'll get only a couple up to the 22. Go, go, go. Run, run. Defensively here, you're facing a top five team in terms of points scored in the NFL. So when they're that high powered, you've got to find a way to hold them under 20. Because to me, that's the magic number. 20 points scored, give yourself your, you give yourself your best chance to win. So if they're up around 24, 28, 30, they could be in some trouble. And I think so, because then you turn it into a shootout. And that means your offense has to keep pace. It'll be a gain of five, but still about three yards shy of the first down marker, and now it's third down. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. Steps, and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 36. And this return is going to be halted right around the 28-yard line. Unfortunately for him, if last week was any indication, we knew a pick was coming at some point. Last week, it was interception after interception, and here we go again. We actually quit counting last week <laughs> at a certain point because I thought I was going to run out of fingers, right? Because I'm not all that skilled as a mathematician. But you're right, it felt like a matter of time, and you've got to think the guys on defense, they couldn't wait for this opportunity after what they saw on tape. And, you know, he may not have the franchise tag, but I bet they're relieved to have that deal done, keep him around. And he's a good guy, a valuable player to them, and they wanted to make sure they had him around. Good team chemistry, always hard to find, and when you've got it, you don't want to let it get away. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. For the Eagles, a look now at the starters on the defensive side of the ball. This crew against the pass, it's been a real struggle. Second from the bottom in the NFL, number 31. Theory is abound. People have opinions. But too often for this team this season, it's been the big play that's done them in. Throwing on third down, Newton. And he'll dump this off to his running back, McCaffrey. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 12 yards there as they move the chains. He missed on his first three passes, was 0 for 3. Now gets a connection, maybe that'll get him going. Yeah, it wasn't a time for panic, but there was some concern because once you start in a certain pattern, you wonder, can you get out of it? And that flips the other way, too, when you're throwing it really well. In this case, now he's got his first completion. They think he might be off to the races. The numbers for McCaffrey last week. 22 carries, 110 yards in the score. And give him a ton of credit. He's running the ball really well. But I look at those guys up front. That unit is truly playing as just that. Every move that they make, their teammate understands what that move means and what they need to do. And right now, they're starting to grind it out pretty well. Personal foul on his 
unnecessary roughness. Defense. A little too much extracurricular there. When you have a game with a lot of contact, tensions are going to run pretty high. You're going to be emotional, but you have to harness it somehow. And he didn't on that play. A shotgun snap for Newton. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. Once you get into the red zone and the safeties have less ground to cover, you better be quick with your delivery. Not much space to get a ball in there. Yeah, when that field shrinks with those safeties, it's almost like there's a couple extra defenders out there, right? It certainly is. They end up taking up extra space just because there's not enough space for receivers to run through. They'll give it to him up the middle. And he gets him a little bit closer. He takes it from the six inside the five to the four. Defensively, I think they can smell a stop ball right around the five here, brings up third. And I think what they've done is they put doubt in the minds of the offensive guys. What do we do? Because now you don't have a go-to play. Either side they pick, throwing it, running it, it won't be easy. They're able to hold them to three there, and that leads to a fourth and goal. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. And Gano's kick is right through. And the Panthers stake claim to a 3-0 lead. They took it all the way to the one, but in the end, opt for three. Just doesn't sound right, does it? If you get all the way down to the one-yard line, isn't that supposed to be a play in the end zone that culminates in a touchdown for your team? <laughs> and per usual, it felt like the guys on the sideline wanted to go ahead and go for it. Of course they did, but of course head coach, it defers back to him, and he made the decision, let's get three out of this, make sure we get some points. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. The Panther rush too strong. They get there and take him down. Mario Addison able to drop him for a loss of four. Well, let's see here, Charles. He was sacked six times last week. Now a first quarter sack. What's going on in his mind? Well, he's thinking to himself, five offensive linemen. I got sacked six times last week. Let's start thinking about keeping extra people in. Tight end stays in. If I have a fullback or the running back, they stay in and help me block. Maybe not as many receivers in a pattern. Anything to try and slow down that pass rush. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. From the gun, it's Wins. Forced out to his left. He'll have a first down past the 40. And finally, down at the 41-yard line. Wentz can pull it down when he needs to, and the 6'5 quarterback picks up the first down. So the youngster able to use the legs to pick up the first. And one of my pet peeves when they see this guy play, when Carson Wentz takes off running the football, I always hear people go, oh, he's sneaky athletic. No, he's athletic. Watch him do it. He's an integral part of the quarterback run game, and he gets it done very, very well. You don't like sneaky athletic, do you? That's no, just no. kind of a jab in the back. Yeah, not when it doesn't apply. I think that's a stereotype that needs to be broken down for him. The numbers for Jeffrey from last week, three catches, 80 yards. Look, I know everybody wants to be number one in everything they do, but he's number two in the league in receiving yards. That's a strong number, a strong year, and they want that to continue. Under pressure, and he will go down. Sacked back at the 46. K1 short, able to collapse the pocket and drop him for a loss of a yard. Tremendous read and reaction by the defensive tackle. And frankly, partner, it's not that often the DTs have that type of easy access back to the quarterback. Never bought the play action fake. Play action to Sproles. Wins. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And they will take over at the 29-yard line. With no running backs in the backfield to help pass protect, all the receivers in their patterns is going to be hot routes if they sense a blitz or pressure on the quarterback they've got to be prepared to break routes off early and get the football in this case uh, never even had a chance they popped the ball free in the backfield and that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started uh, it's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. 
I think quarterbacks got to see that. Got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. He'll drop it off to McCaffrey. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. Give him seven on the play, and that's going to bring up a third down. He felt the pressure coming there. That was a good job of just making something out of nothing, so to speak. Yeah, it took the hit and still made the play. You know, when we talk about runners, all right, and on running plays, runs after contact, we call that getting dirty yards, tough, gritty ones. To me, that's like the version of a dirty pass. He knows he's going to get smacked, yet still delivers the football and picks up good yardage. I think the training and practice broke down on that play because he simply didn't run the route deep enough to get to the first down marker, despite what was a really nice catch and toe tap on the sideline. Now that's third down 101. You got to go to the marker, know where it is. So two first quarter field goal attempts for him, and he's converted on both. I like the positive right there. Two for two, got the points on the board. The negative side is they didn't score touchdowns. And of course, going forward in this game, that's going to be the aim, and hopefully he'll be kicking extra points instead. Here comes Eagle offense now as they get set to take over here. And job one here, Charles, just keep possession of the football. Two drives, two turnovers to this point. You're exactly right, Doctor. Hippocratic oath, first do no harm. And right now, they're harming themselves on offense. I like that. No one is mistaking me for a doctor, though. But thank you, Dr. Davis. A gain of six there on first. Sensational he was last week, over 200 yards. And the simple quote that we saw this week was, keep him in front of us. They're going to have to do that. And, and when they say that, it means tackling him after the catch. Because once he makes the catch, you may catch it in front. But if you don't tackle him, he's behind you at that point, and that's how he racks up the big yardage. A nifty bit of scrambling there. 12 yards, first down. Well, that was man coverage. So once he decides to run with the football, there's no one to account for him, and he turns it into a nice gain. Hey. Wentz now on first down. Gonna look deep for Jeffrey. And it drops down incomplete. Thought he might have had it. Instead, second down. But well, one thing's for sure, when you get a big receiver and you trust him downfield, you're gonna give him opportunities to go up and get that 50-50 ball. And he is a darn good big receiver. Unfortunately, that time didn't work out. Nice job defensively. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And not much there at all. Maybe a yard up to the 43. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. And what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. Goes underneath for Sproles. And he'll get it out to midfield. Looks like, yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. It's a gain of seven, and that's going to make it fourth down. Instead of throwing it downfield, Charles, they just tried to dump it underneath there. You like the call? I do. I think it's a high percentage play because you get the completion, and what you're counting on is your back to use his legs and his elusiveness to make people miss and pick up the first down. In this case, it didn't happen. Wentz now to throw, and he fires one that's intercepted. It's the Pro Bowl of Luke Kinkley that picks it, and they will set up shop at their own 46-yard line. They told us repeatedly earlier in the week in our meetings, we need some plays from our defense here on the road early. They got one. And don't think they were above all week long pointing out to their defense that the other defense is rated higher than them. You got to let that happen, guys? Is that how we're going to play? And they responded to the challenge. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. A big time gain there on the keeper, using his legs to hurt him. First down. And that was a nice, strong run by the guy they call the field general. Hey, 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 hey. Hey. Now Darquan. Yeah, he showed off a nice juke of the defender, but the next wave there to bring him down. The pro bowler Fletcher Cox there to get him down. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. On second down, McCaffrey. And he'll take this into the end zone. Touchdown, Carolina. A great play there. His third touchdown now on the year. And the Panthers add on to their lead. I wonder if he changed anything on his play sheet 
or they just executed better? Because they had two previous drives that ended in field goals before this one they finally were able to put into the end zone. Well, whatever he did, speaking of the offensive coordinator, might be using that formula going forward. It worked there. Yeah, it worked very well. He and his field general in pretty good sync right now. They're starting to move the ball well. Philadelphia getting sent to take the field. And two interceptions thrown here in this first half. You hear it, no matter the sport, they say the great athletes, they can kind of have a short-term memory, but that's easier said than done. It is easier said than done. And that's caught inside the 35. Wentz able to hook up with Aguilar for a big gain, 43 yards. Tell the truth, partner. You didn't think he was coming down with that one, did you? Come on, tell me the truth. <laughs> no, I didn't. I'll tell you what, though. A one-handed grab of that length. Talk about giving your team a little juice. Oh, big time. I mean, everyone's going to be excited about that one, whether you're on the field or not. It permeates its way through the entire team, and I can't wait to see what they do on the next down. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. Another dangerous throw there, partner. I mean, he's already thrown two interceptions here in the first half. I don't know if you want to keep throwing up 50-50 balls when you've had that kind of lack of success. Yeah, absolutely. Very well could have been a third interception in half number one. Just a couple there on the second down run. Now they're staring at a third and eight situation. Well, that didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just darted in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of see ball, get ball. Here's Wentz to throw. And here's another interception, the third of this first quarter. Picked up by James Bradbury. And a very good return as he takes us all the way up to the 35-yard line. All right, work with me, partner. This is a classic understatement. Their execution has been very poor. Last three drives, two interceptions and a fumble. Winning football? We're not seeing it right now. Now following the interception, here's Newton. Got a man right side, it's McCaffrey. It's a gain of five, and it's a second down. It is hard in zone coverage to stop a curl route because when they see it, they just try. With my good friend Charles Davis, Brandon Gauden with you. It's the Panthers in possession of the football as we begin quarter number two. They've got a second down and five here to start things out. Back to throw, Newton. This one complete to Devin Funches. Newton finding Funches for the Panther first down. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz game. And you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. Give them 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. Oh, my Cam. There's times when I'm not analyzing up here. I'm just appreciating. Led NFL quarterbacks in rushing last year. He is truly the ultimate. Pressure comes and down he goes. The Eagles get there for the sack. Fletcher Cox with a great push up front. He picks up the sack and a loss of eight. What a nice read and play by the defensive tackle. Never bought the play action fake. Went right for the quarterback and put him on the ground. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he might have got this across midfield, not by much. They'll mark it down at the 49. They get two yards back, but they're going to need a lot more than that here on third down. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense. Under pressure here, and down he goes. Shaq back at about the 43-yard line. Michael Bannon with a big-time sack on third down. And it'll be a loss of seven. And this one will be touched down inside the 40-yard line. The Eagles coming out as they get ready. And with three interceptions thrown already, we'll see. Do they, do they rely more on the ground game here? They may have to change things offensively to try and settle things down, not just for the guy throwing the ball, but for the rest of the offensive unit because his confidence has to be shaken a little bit. And you just wonder, is the backup going to start to warm up a little bit over on the sideline? 
I think the last two plays really illustrate how difficult it is to game plan against this guy because you know he can throw the football, but how about his use of legs as well? What we call those broken plays, you can't account for them. Yeah, those plays, those two that you just mentioned, a microcosm really of how he can hurt you. And a nice gain of 21 yards. Nice movement there by Carson Wentz outside of the pocket, completes another pass. Help me out here, partner. He's not sneaky athletic. <laughs> he is athletic. How many times do I have to say yeah, it? Yeah, you've been making that declaration for a while. And at 6'5", he ran a 40 of 4.77. So not only big, but he can move. That's a good time for a quarterback. He and Andrew Luck, similar physiques, similar athletic ability. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. Normally, we're talking about a quarterback duel where they're matching each other pass for pass. How about the footwork in this one? Both of these guys running the ball well. Yeah, they mixed in the run game. You're exactly right. Now, both coaches might not like how much their quarterbacks have taken off, but another example right there of just good mobility. Now, here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. Boy, the numbers throwing the football just not trending in the right direction. Last week, he was under 50%. He's under 50% again here. And we haven't gotten an announcement, but it appears to me that he might be a little dinged up and is just trying to play through. You know, he's one of those tough guys that wants to answer the bell each and every play for his team. That might be throwing off his accuracy. And a short gain here down to the 22. Come on now. Come on now. One yard, the official pick up there, so it's going to set up third and nine. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a real priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. These type of plays are backbreakers for our defense. They thought they had him hemmed in, thought they were going to get him on the ground with the pass rush, but were unable to do so. He gets away, picks up a big first down, and sets up first and goal inside the 10. He steps away to his left. The improv on the scramble there gets him six, and it'll be second down. They brought the blitz that time, and I thought they were going to get to him, but instead, he flipped it on its ear and ended up picking up positive yardage. I thought he was dead to rights, but you are exactly correct, sir. Able to turn that into a positive game. They'll try to run it now with Sproles. And he will take this one in for an eagle touchdown. Sproles, his fourth touchdown on the year. And the Eagles are back with it a score. We well, got a little bit of everything on that run. Offensive line creating some space. But how about the guy running behind his pads into the end zone? What does that mean when a guy says running behind his pads? It means that he's going to be a physical runner. That way he's able to use his shoulder pads, his forearms, anything to ward off people. The power is way forward. Elliott good on the extra point, and it's now 13 to 7. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays, and it ends with a three yard scoring run. Elliott now to kick this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone, and no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25 yard line. Here's the Carolina offense as they get ready to take over here. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. Before the game, they were running the route tree about as efficiently and effectively as we could have possibly imagined. But sometimes the passes just go awry. Yeah, let's face it. When you're running the route tree in pregame, you don't have defenders breathing down your neck. You don't have defensive backs making plays on the football. Hard to replicate the intensity of the game in pregame. And he's got the first down yardage before being taken down at midfield. And a nice gain of 21 yards. On first down, this is McCaffrey. And he'll be taken down right around the 41-yard line. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, 
Got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? Newton going to hand it off to McCaffrey, and he'll take this one down to about the 40. Fletcher Cox there for the tackle. Doubling this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate that one alive, just stuffed it. In fact, before the game, he was talking to us, and he's like, hey, these pants make me look fat. And we said, nah, man, you're just a whole lot of guy. He is at well over 300 pounds. He's a big man. Only three there on the pickup, but that's enough to move the chains. Just about every coach we talk to says the crowd shouldn't affect us. That shouldn't be an issue. And then the next breath they talk about taking the crowd and taking them out of the game by picking up first downs and keeping them at bay. I think we just saw an example of that there, didn't we? It's important to do it, especially early in the game like they have. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. They'll run with Darquan. And a solid run down inside the 30. And he's able to get most of what he needed on the carry there. Seven yards on the gain, and it's third and two now. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. They'll try and pick it up with McCaffrey. Call it no gain that time, and they're going to be left looking up at a fourth and one. Perfectly designed blitz right there. They took that one from the grease board to the field because they were able to free up their linebacker to get into the backfield and spill the play. And Gano's kick is right through. And now it's a two-score game at nine, 16 to seven. So he's been a busy man here in this first half. That's three field goals for him now. And not just three field goals, but three for three. So even though the offense has struggled a bit putting it in the end zone, they've still been able to come away with points due to his leg. After knocking through the field goal, here's Gano back out there now for the kickoff. This one taken just inside the 10. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. The Eagles offense back out onto the field, and they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline, because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there, freezing the defense just enough to bring the tight end free downfield for the completion. Now Wentz throwing on second down. Pressure comes in. He's brought down. It's a Panther sack. Dontari Poe able to collapse the pocket and drop him for a loss of a yard. Charles, not to point fingers, but how much of this goes on the shoulders of the offensive line? Well, look at the six sacks last week. That's the fourth in this game. Definitely the bulk of it does go on the offensive line. That's what they're tasked with. And that's caught inside the 35. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. And that one results in 35 yards. Well, even after all those interceptions, he's not deterred, still confident to go deep at work there. I think all the old rules about playing that position still apply. If things go wrong, you still act like you're the best player out on the field. You still carry that supreme arrogance with you and continue to fire the ball. I've seen guys have games like this, and this is where you find out if you're great or not. Can you overcome some interceptions and still lead your team to victory? Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. That's very well timed there defensively because it's not a bad throw, but the collision came at the exact time he was reaching to bring in the football. Really, really well done. Decent offense, just better defense. I think you're right. And he'll be taken down just shy of the red zone at the 21. Well, this play sequence was really kind of called in reverse. Incomplete pass on first and 10. Nice run on second and 10 when probably everyone was expecting them to throw the football. Now, if you're the defense, 
What are they going to do on third down? You're a little off balance. And we'll remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll join Jonathan Coachman and the gang in Orlando. Coach will have stats and scores from the early games going on here around the NFL. They'll run it with Sproles. And he takes it down to the 13 and picks up the first. It's an eight-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. Exactly what they needed right there because they needed to use the ground game to take some pressure off because the quarterback's been struggling a little bit. Here's Sproles. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. It's a 10-yard gain there, and it sets him up now first and goal. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. Now they'll throw it. Wentz. And this is caught. Touchdown, Philadelphia. Golden Tate, his ninth touchdown of the season. And the Eagles have cut it back within a score. On those slants, everything happens so quickly. What makes it work? The timing between the passer and the receiver. In this case, a slant route. Ordinarily, it's probably about three steps before you go on the slant. In this amount of time, I think it was a two-step deal. Boom, put his foot in the ground and got inside for the pass. Got inside for the pass, got inside for the catch and the score. Elliott Good with a PAT. And the lead is down to two. So that drive goes eight plays. The result, Philadelphia in the end zone. Elliott now to kick this one away. On the return, it's Kimyon Barner. And good starting field position. He'll get this one all the way up to about the 35-yard line. Carolina getting set to take the field. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're, they're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Yeah, run what you do best. Again. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns. Now the Panthers going to use the first of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. So the offense takes the timeout, and they are back out and ready to rock. Now Newton on first down. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. He was looking for the connection with Devin Funches, and that'll bring up second down. They always say that real estate is about location. Well, guess what? When it's a slant route, the quick ones, timing, timing, timing. Got to be able to lead your man with the football. And the timing off right there, threw it behind him. On second and 10, Newton. And caught left side, Olsen. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. As the clock shows 50 seconds to play here in half number one. The Panthers on third down. They've converted three times and eight chances. Here it's third and three. To the air again, Newton. And he finds a man, it's Olsen. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. Newton to Olsen there for a Carolina first down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Left side by Funches. And he works it past the 30, almost to the 25. 
That one goes for 13 yards and it moves the sticks. Newton now 11 of 17 passing thus far. He's got his guys a first and 10. A final shot before the break. Newton. And he'll be brought down at the 21, just shy of the 20 in the red zone. The second half upon us sooner than we bargained for. Week seven, second half. Let's do it. The Panthers out in front, and they will get the football first. Second half.